Ah, what's up everybody in the ballroom mastery world? This is Vaughn. I hope you are doing amazing. You must excuse my hair. It's flipping out of here because I've been sweating my face off dancing, getting prepared for the upcoming exams we have. But uh, I hope you're really well wherever you are out there in the beautiful world. And uh, give me a like or a share and let me know what you love about dancing because I want to talk to you today about why goals are super important with dancing. Uh, in fact, anything in life. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask you a question. It sometimes annoys people. But do you believe in the power of your excuses? Because a lot of the uh, coaching that I do with students, most of them don't realize they come for dance, but they live with life, right? Uh, it's the way I've been coached. My, uh, I had mentors in terms of uh, business and, and life coaches that taught me tremendous lessons that were perfect for dancing. But in dancing, people neglect the mindset side of things way too much. So we, I want to talk to that, you about that because there's no way I could have gone from two left feet with no skills, just like every beginner, whoever picks up a pair of dancing shoes and gets on a dance floor has, and go into the sort of top 20 in the world professional 10 dance and be one of the only two representatives in Australia to be selected to go overseas four times. And the reason I tell you that is so you understand that these things don't just magically happen. It's not about innate talent. You know, to become the best dancer you need to be, you need a track to run on and you need to know where you're going. Goals serve a greater purpose than just setting a goal because I know you've heard this about before, right? Like coaches have said, you've got to set goals, but most people don't understand how they work and how they function. And it's something I'll go into in a little bit more depth later, but let me give you the nuts and bolts right now. Goals are for, well, why don't you write down what you think goals are for and I'll give you the answer. Tell me right in the comments below what you think goals are actually for. Why do we actually set them and why do we need them? And every time I ask that question to people and outside the dance world, I have the good fortune of being a, a, a coach and uh, I do very high ticket sales, like fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 of what clients pay me to come in, sit down with their team, to work with them on setting goals, setting visions and helping them understand how to get better results, right? So what I'm telling you really works because they achieve outstanding results when they understand the formula. But why don't you tell me what you think goals are for and why we need them? Because most people say goals are for the things, right? So they're to say, I know where to go from A to B. Uh, so I know at least I'll pass my exam or I'll pass my competition and whatnot. So uh, Terry, what's up? Nice to see you. Thank you. Good. Off to the gym. Go crush that gym. But goals fundamentally... The things that you get from having a goal and from achieving a goal is only a byproduct of what a goal does. So I think one of the best things to understand is that goals inherently of themselves are for growth and for the person you become. That's actually what they do. Now, the reason goals don't work, and this is also important to understand, is most people set weak goals. They don't know where they're going and they don't really know why they're going there. And they set a goal that's sort of in a category of A, B, or C. A C type goal is like, okay, um, if I think I can do it and everything lines up, then I'll, you know, then it will work out for me. So if I think I can make more money, well, then you know that's a goal I'll take. If I think I'll get that promotion, that's something I'll do. If I think I can be a better dancer, then I'll commit to more training. Right? That's a very disempowering goal. Don't even bother; it won't work. Um, the B type goals are like what I may be able to get if things work out. Like, so, you know, okay, I'm going to commit for a little bit. And, you know, if I do it long enough and it may work out, then I'm going to stick to it. And those are the sort of goals most people set. They're B category goals, meaning that they, they will write them down. They won't really believe they can do them. They'll give themselves an exit clause. And therefore, they're only marking time because after a year or so, when things don't turn up, because of course, why would they with a goal that's maybe may, a May type goal or a B type goal, uh, they get there in 12 months, go see, I knew it couldn't happen. Uh, and then they find all of the excuses as to why, which are very real because you've got to understand something about excuses. If you come up with an excuse, it's something you can buy into. Uh, we all do this. Any one of us can make an excuse and believe it and buy into it. That's no problem. Like you don't have enough time to train, right? You don't have enough money for dancing. Of course, if you say that, then that's true. The rest of us who actually achieve things in life don't buy into those excuses. They make the money. They find the time. And so you got to decide who do you want to become? Because ultimately, that's what a goal does. Are you going to be someone who actually sets a goal and achieves it? Or are you going to be somebody who 
maybe if all the conditions line up and uh, the numerology says and the stars are all in a perfect line and the planets line up and people tell me I can do it, then I'll set those goals. Unfortunately, you're never going to get anywhere with that type of belief system. The A-type goals you want to set are the most powerful ones, but they're the most illogical ones. And they're the ones that are not taught in schools. Most personal development books don't talk about this. But the A-type goals are what you want. Now, it sounds simple, but what you want flies in the face of most things that are currently in your life. You see, let's take a different look at things for a moment. Um, what you have in your life right now, the skills, the talents, and abilities you currently have in your world that you've built over your time, whether you're 70 or 17, they will not be enough to get you to the next stage or the level you want to go to for your goal. And you might say, that's true, I understand that. But then why do you set a goal that's a B or C type goal? Meaning one that you maybe think can happen. You see, an A-type goal is something that is so far out of anything you've ever done before, it's not even part of your comfort zone, but it's so far out of the realm of your experience that you have no freaking idea how it's even going to happen. You don't even know if it's possible, right? That's what an A-type goal is. It's something that is so far beyond anything you can even basically think about doing. It's like, I just know I want it. I, I don't even know why I want it. I want it badly, though. I would love to have that thing. Oh, but then the voice comes up. Maybe I can't do it because I don't have the, the I don't have the resources. I don't have the the money. I don't have those excuses, right? You've got to learn to set goals based upon what you want, not what you think you can get. You have to set goals based upon what you want, not what you think you can get. They are two different worlds, but the world I'm talking about is the one that success is in. It is the one that where the people who you admire live, even if they can't articulate it, that's what they do. They don't even bother about the how. They're like, that's what I want. Now in dancing, that's exactly what you got to do. That's what I did. I was like, pretty girl on my arm. I was like, I'm in, right? I want to travel the world dancing. I can't even close my feet to cha-cha music. Holy crap. How am I, how am I going to even, how am I going to travel the world dancing? That's crazy, right? But I wanted it. That's what I'm saying to you. I wanted it. So then I was ready to take on the next challenge because there are levels to goal achievement. The first is setting the right goal, setting one that scares the bejesus out of you and scaring one, setting one that is exciting at the same time. And you really don't know how it's going to happen. You just know that you want it. If you set a goal like that, you're ready to take the next stages, which then become moving into developing more passion for dancing or more passion for what you do, developing a purpose behind the passion, and then moving into mastery, which is what you ultimately have to do if you're going to achieve that goal. Mastery is key. Mastering your art, your craft, mastering yourself, you know, creating the discipline and the habits that you need to become that person in the goal that you have set. Because your skills, your talents and abilities right now are not enough to get you there. So therefore, you have to be willing to set that goal, but then trade your life for that goal and give yourself almost an indefinite time frame to commit to it until it happens. For me, that was 10 years. And one of the things I have here, have a look at this. Dance plan. This thing is like from early 2000s. So I, I set like a dance plan with like, with like a full plan on this. Look, this is like diet, gym, lifestyle. Uh image and self-image isn't this so look at this this was not just about material stuff this was a full makeover like what was i going to do less than three coffees a week uh moderate carbohydrates plenty of living foods the gym uh cardio regime stretch class box fit lifestyle restrict partying to social occasions not going out adhere to diet decrease uh <laughs> tv watching stuff right so like these are really really important now image dress my best for success i know that sounds like cliche but it was super true uh, a fit and toned body, like a nice wardrobe, then a self-image. And here's the key, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this one. Self-image. This is the most important thing to understand about positive psychology. It is the way you see yourself in relation to the world. A self-image is what is referred to as a mirror. So I've mentioned in previous videos that you should go and check out that for me to become a better dancer, I had to first believe that I could be a better dancer, but I had to be a better dancer in my mind straight away. Not because my skills were not going to reflect it. Maybe you can respond, you know, uh, uh, um, what's it called? Relate to that where it's like, you know, you want to be better, but like you can't, you know, you're just not sure you physically can't do those things yet. Um, what I did in my mind's eyes, I watched the best dancers, I modeled them and I modeled their behavior and I started to uh, emulate that behavior. And one of those was dressing the part, but also inside, I had to start seeing myself immediately. So a self-image is a mirror to the world. That means the best dancers in the world walk around with certain posture all the time, not when they dance. Uh, the best dancers in the world 
have a certain way of moving their body all the time, not just when they dance. And so that's the self-image, right? You have to literally act the part. Uh, it's like Godot said, you must be before you can do, before you can have. And so most people want the having without the being and the doing. And, you know, I had a lady recently get really upset with me. She was a, a, a good friend and, uh, and I've known her for years, but she got very upset with me when I, um, as a coach, our role is to really help people commit to their goals. She didn't like some of the things I had to say to her because at the end of the day, if you have expectations about what you're going to be as a dancer and whatnot, they've got to be um, in alignment with your commitment level. So it is absolute bullshit for you to believe that you could become a world-class dancer if you're doing one lesson a week. Just get rid of that idea. It's not relative to you. And it's important you understand that because I don't believe, I believe that you can do whatever you set your mind to, but you must raise your standards for what you tolerate. Meaning a professional world-class dancer would never tolerate training one day a week. They just, it just cannot happen, right? You don't get to that level training one day a week. It's just, not, it's just never going to happen. So what you must align with the goal is what you're work willing to do. So if you're saying, I would like to be a teacher, and then you only do a group class, that is not in alignment. So th therefore, you're, you're not being now. You're not doing the, it in the now. You're waiting to have it before you do it. It doesn't work that way. So you set your goals, set them with a clear intention, set them with excitement and energy and passion and motivation and go like, I would love this only because I want it. I don't care what my friends and family say, I want this, this would be great. Then your actions, your discipline and your habits have to start to reflect that of what you want. And when you commit to something like that long enough, you will notice your habits change. You'll notice your muscular energy change. You'll notice that your uh, nervous system will start to shape and reframe your body. You will start to develop the habits that the dancers you want to be like have. And so I hope this really helps you today. Um, please let me know what your goals are, you know, and then are your actions in alignment with that? Because it's very easy when you get to a certain way of thinking to write out big goals. But then when it comes to writing out the actions behind what you need to change, in terms of the level of practice or the level of commitment you need to make to the thing, that's where people fall down and then they say goals don't work. Goals work. You just got to set the right one. You got to set one you want and then you got to make sure that you stick to it until it comes to fruition. And just believe that I believe in you. You can do that. And that's what this is all about. So I want to thank you. I love having you here as part of the page. Make sure you enjoy some of the videos, uh, the free content we've got on YouTube. And uh, by the way, I have a channel called Ballroom, uh, sorry, a, a product called Ballroom Mastery uh, Blueprint. Come and check it out. It's nine bucks a month. And I give four really high level, awesome lessons that have action steps at the end of each one each week. You can listen to it uh, in the studio, on the way to the studio. You can read it. And they'll, they all have takeaways. I'm a big, I, I have frameworks with everything I teach. I'll break down certain level things on principles of posture, musicality, um, how to do certain steps in the waltz, how to do certain steps in samba or cha cha, or do all 10 dances, um, and then how to go through mindset training, attitude. Check it out. Uh, there'll be a link somewhere on the page. Love to have you part of it. It's nine bucks. Like it'll be the best add on to your dancing. And uh, each week, I'll give you a really good takeaway from it um, and let me know how it changes your dancing. I know it's worked with people all over the world. Till then, this is Vaughn. I really look forward to seeing you uh, and meeting you one day. But for now, thanks for being part of the page and stay tuned for the next lesson where my hair might be a little better. <laughs> thanks, guys.